Hi, folks. Dr. Bob McCauley. Continuing on um, with an overview of my book, uh, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. And yes, the body can cure itself of any disease, including cancer. You just need to follow my health protocol. We're still, we're about a quarter way into the book, and I'm talking about the medical establishment and why. Uh, so I don't just give my health protocol on that. That's the second half, half of the book. The first half, half is to talk about the medical establishment and why it is really worthless when it comes to chronic and infectious diseases. So we're going to talk about where they really shine. We'll do that right now. Uh, the, the true value of the medical establishment. Well, that's, of course, when we get into an accident. Um, if I get into an accident on, um, you know, maybe around the house or maybe um, down the road or on the highway or something, I want the medical establishment and the medical people to come and put me into an ambulance and take care of me. Who doesn't? We all want that, and they, they're fantastic at doing that. I really think they shine. Uh, you know, EMS is really, really important. These people are frontline workers. It's great. It's just when it comes to chronic and infectious disease. So, um, you know, the next next little chapter here is no soup for you. And so what I'm talking about that, that's, of course, that's the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. No soup for you. No soup for you. Well, no medical services for you. If you don't believe in our our vaccines and our um, and in this type of stuff, you know, every, everything we're going to offer you about chronic disease or vaccinations or any of that, then we're just not going to take care of you when you hit your head. If you fall and you cut your head open, you will not be admitted to the emergency room. <laughs> Stay at home, find that sewing kit you stole from the Marriott, <laughs> and stitch it up yourself, Doc. You when you hit your head, we had Jimmy Kimmel a while ago do a whole, you know, my, you got all these medical doctors together, and they just said, if you can't take a vaccine, then lose my number. Just, I'm just not going to take care of you. You can just bleed to death out on the highway. I mean, it's really just to stop to think about that, really. What a threat. It's just a threat. Take this vaccine, do this. I don't care which vaccine it is, any vaccine. Uh, if you want, it should be a, a choice, right? It, the autonom autonomy of your body. All right, so, so uh, next is how the media conditions us to think about health, and they do. They uh, put out headlines, they cherry pick studies, they say, hey, let's look at this over here, and they prop up, uh, you know, they, they're really hit and run artists. Uh, they'll find something about diabetes and the, or the cure for cancer is right around the corner or we've had some medical break, breakthroughs. You read one or two articles and then it's on uh, to the next thing and you, you think there's maybe some cures coming, some great advances in Alzheimer research and all this. It's just, you know, they just hype things up and then just sell some copies or to get clicks on a website and they're on to the next. So they really have, um, you know, you know, you used to see uh, back when they had magazines, Newsweek and Time Magazine, about every six months they would say, whoa, the cure for cancer, oh, the cure for this, Stanton's is coming to rescue us. Well, um, you know, so they, they really shape how we think very much about health, and they have a lot to do with it. Uh, next subchapter, of course, they're prima no, no, no ser. Now, it's supposed to be, it's, uh, that's Latin for, uh, well, it should be prima non non ser, first do no harm. But um, this is actually prima no ser, which means first you do harm. And what that shows you is, what I'm trying to say is that the medical establishment, uh, you know, and their cures and their treatments uh, for cancer harm you a lot. CT scans. Uh, chemotherapy, you, you know, they break down the immune system, they expose you to high amounts of radiation um, and, and other and, and lethal chemicals. I've always said chemotherapy is, well, they're, they're going to try to kill you or the cancer at the same time and we're going to see who survives. So hopefully it'll be you. Um, don't worry, you'll get a bill no matter what. Uh, next is, first of all, shame on you. Well, that's when I went to uh, my medical doctor. I hadn't been to see one in 15 years because I wanted to get some blood work done and I kind of forced to do get medical care health I should say health insurance because um, you know the, the government now mandates it it's really great not really but uh, so I got this so I go down at least get some blood work done out of a year and the first thing he says when's the last time you seen a doctor I said 15 years ago as well first of all shame on you <laughs> because you need to be trained to always go to the doctor every year because that's what a good person does. That's someone who's, you know, responsible and, you know, values their family and this kind of stuff. They go to the doctor every year and get checked out. So this is what you're supposed to do. So again, more more training, more, you know, think along the way we think. Um, 
And then the next uh, chapter there, of course, we got uh, the medical medical doctor God. And this is the way they see themselves, this is the way they portray themselves, and they know everything about health, they put themselves in a lofty position, um, and they make tremendous amounts of money. Um, when I was growing up, literally we had a doctor live really, uh, my doctor lived pretty close, he lived in our neighborhood. When my mother was growing up, she used to tell me um, all the doctors generally lived in the neighborhoods of the people they served. And the truth is now, you know, and they, and they would show up at your, for a house visit. When's the last time you heard of a doctor going to somebody's house? You go to them. And, um, and so, you know, they get paid so much. We couldn't afford to live in their neighborhoods. I mean, the average doctor makes $300,000 a year. Um, and the reason they're really not worth it is because they don't cure people of anything. Um, so that's that. Again, you get a... Uh, a brain surgeon or something or something happened to you again an accident that they're worth a lot of money but when it comes to disease no um, your next is infallible doctrines uh, you know just kind of more of the same telling you that uh, these doctrines these ideas of theirs are infallible they just uh, they're they're perfect that you don't 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 doubt them you're just a fool if you do and and you know they really uh, take the average person and they make you kind of feel stupid that you even dare to ask or dare to challenge any anything they were they were telling you about whatever disease you have and in particular again the book is about cancer but it could be any disease um, next one is the uh, stadium secativum S Deus, the scientific study guide. So um, this is one of my favorites because you know really uh, the whole medical establishment in, in the scientific world, in particular medicine, they revolve around these studies. I mean, it doesn't exist if you don't have a study. If you don't have a study to prove something, then it doesn't. It didn't work. Where are your studies? The first thing I always tell people: if I were to go out there and start uh, debating a medical doctor about anything, which none of them would ever do, I can guarantee you that. Uh, for a number of reasons, I don't. I just don't think they would take me seriously. What would I know? I haven't got medical training. Well, medicine doesn't lead to health, but don't tell them that. So uh, they would say, produce your studies. Where are your studies for your raw food diet? Where's your studies for your ionized water? Well, I don't have uh, you know hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to spend on studies. And where's my study for somebody doing my protocol and and getting cured of cancer? Well, I mean, it'd be so difficult to have such a study to begin with. Um, who's ever going to sign on to my study and then in the end they could just poo-poo it and say well there were other things involved um, like there couldn't be other things involved in every study um, these are called uh, you know non-control variables so in other words these variables uh, they really come in and they you know you don't know what happened to somebody during one of these studies in other words uh, were they smoking cigarettes at the time and didn't tell you were they under a lot of stress were they depressed I mean you could, the list goes on so um, that's their studies kind of uh, but that's what they use to club you over the head with their studies they pray to their studies they live by their studies and they're gonna die by those studies because um, let me tell you something folks you can't you live by the study die by the study uh, the brotherhood of science and atheism um, and that's what really science is it's atheistic um, you know I always tell people you don't need to believe in God and you don't believe have to believe that this is the temple of God to be here healed but when uh, you follow my health protocol and you're not sick afterwards you just won't have anyone to thank okay so you don't have to believe in God for this to work because it's just about physical Theology. It's not about belief in God. But, uh, you know, science many, many years ago decided to leave God out of the, out of the equations um, and out of the formulations. And so God doesn't exist. And if you say he does, they just, you know, they just poo-poo that, you know. Your belief is, in God is just that, your belief. Leave it at the door. And they'll ridicule, ridicule their own colleagues who believe in, in kind of in a, in a God of any kind, or, or want to say, uh, you know, we should pray, or this is a miracle. They're just going to say, no, everything is science, and science has become the new atheism. Um, and really, what science does is it reveals nature and reveals God's great work. And the idea that we're going to go to a laboratory and find and you know put our little chemicals together there, whatever they're going to do, and find a cure for your cancer or arthritis or fibromyalgia or any disease is ridiculous especially cancer they're never gonna find this cure it's right around the corner <laughs> don't worry folks uh, you know it that's some corner <clears throat> 
they, they, you know, they're never going to find that cure. The cure for all diseases, go look in the mirror, you'll see it. Uh, next is, of course, science deniers and, and, and world scoffers. And, uh, you know, that's what they look at anybody with faith as just somebody, um, you know, that, uh, you know, really isn't, uh, you know, you, your faith and your belief in things is nice, but we have science. If you can't prove it, if you can't put up the study, then, you know, you, you're, it's just worthless. That's, that's their... Uh, that's their whole approach to everything. Uh, the next is the Heisenberg Principle of Studies, and this is this these variables, these uncontrolled variables. So you don't know what happened inside a study, really. Um, you know, again, somebody says, well, I was on this kind of a diet. Well, really, they were on a totally different type of a diet, or they weren't following your protocol, or they weren't doing something that you, you were told them to do, or you were, they were doing something you told them not to do. So there's all these, these variables. So I call it the Heisenberg Principle. Heisenberg Principle is when you look at something, you can never be sure whether you, you, know, you actually changed it, whether you really... Uh, you know, whether you're really looking at the what it actually is, or whether by looking at it you changed it. So it's kind of a kind of a quandary. Uh, the next is produce your studies. As I said, this would what happen if I tried to go, uh, you know, and debate anybody or talk to anybody about this in a medical world. Where's your studies? And that you know, for them, argument over. Uh, next is faith and reason. Uh, just about that. It just talks about the faith and reason um, and how faith is so important in our lives and but the medical establishment always comes back to reason uh, let's just be reasonable let's just be nice let's just understand that this we need reason you know there's something called reason magazine and it's really an atheist magazine um, if you look at next one is salus ipsum industrial that's the health insurance industrial complex and um, just very shortly, this is why we go in for our copay. Things have changed a lot with um, with all the government getting involved in health insurance. But you know, you could go in and do your five dollars, your ten dollars, and your twenty dollars, and you'd think, "Wow, that's that's what it cost me um, to come here today and and see the doctor for me and my children and my whoever." And uh, that's a copay. And so they said that you know, in the meantime, you're paying out the wazoo for health insurance. So this is one of the most insidious things this little copay and how you know we have health insurance really disease insurance it's not health insurance and um, and how much we're paying for it as if we're all sick it's this one size fits all that's really helping to destroy uh, you know the, the health world um, and I make the point in the next one medicine is in one direction health is in the other so you know and that's the truth that's the nut of it right there I mean you know they got I don't know anything about medicine medications all this kind of thing, and that's in one direction. I, I wasn't trained that way. Health is in the other, but you know, the 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 medical establishment sits upon the throne of health, and uh, falsely by the they're usurpers to that throne because they belong on the throne of medicine and they can have that. The throne of health is for nature, okay? Um, you know, people are naturopaths are should, should be sitting upon the throne of health, and that's what it is. Because, and again, it's just nature. Nature sits upon the throne of health. That, that's all this book is about: showing you how to follow nature. And that's anything but what the medical establishment does. Well, that's another short installment. Um, I've got one more to conclude about the medical world. Um, I'm trying to keep these a little on the short side, so we don't have a big, long, half an hour, hour long video. Um, so I'll be continuing this in the next one, and then we'll finally get into my health protocol. And I just want to keep pushing this book and explain to people why when you want to look, when you want to find the cure for all disease, go find yourself a mirror and look at it. Because in that mirror, you will find the cure for all disease. You, your body. It's nothing I can give you. It's, not, it's only something maybe I can tell you to do. Um, but you have to do it. But your body can cure itself of any disease. I guarantee that. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time.